And what we're going to do next, I'm not going to finish doing all the detail. I'm just going to let you guys take care of that, okay? I'm going to actually build the face and the hair. All right? So if we go back to preview, or sorry, if we go back to layer one and double click, you can actually turn that back to 100%, okay? And you could actually incorporate the picture into layer two. So I'll show you what that looks like here. So we go back to 100, because you might need some of those colors for the shape colors. Or not, you could just build your own. So if I duplicate this, and I'm going to unlock the bottom layer, And I'm actually going to make a copy of this. So copy, I'll do this on the screen so you guys can see that. Edit, copy, edit, paste, okay? Let's move that over to the side. Let's actually bring that into our second layer. Now that's currently in our first layer. Does anybody know how to move that to the top layer? Yeah, yeah you just drag that up. So that just isolates that image into layer two. So now if we hide layer one, you're actually going to see that in layer two. When you try that out, it'll make sense. Okay, so let's go back and let's dim, whoops, let's double click and let's dim the original layer, 40 or 50, okay, so you can actually see your details. And we're going to just put that to the left for now. All right, so I'm going to create a few more shapes. Now this will go back to our Bitmoji exercise where you don't really have to do so much detail, but let's just define the shape of the, the outline of his face, the chin, jaw. And again, from the first part of, or the first video, we talked about the, thick, the stroke thickness, which was 0.15. So you shouldn't be using any fill shapes either, okay? So make sure you're running your stroke at a 0.15, and your fill is going to be none. All right. Now here where you have an overlap, you can go through that, and it doesn't really matter what happens down in here, right? Because it's going to overlap itself. But when you come back out, and we'll just zoom in, you probably want to have the definition connecting. So we'll just outline that. Now I'm not worrying about the, the details in the hair right now. I'm just outlining the face. And like I said in video one, if you want to use the, if you want to use the pencil tool instead, if you're better with that for starting out, you can. Probably a lot easier for you. And command Y is your, your shortcut or I'm toggling in and out with outline preview. <clears throat> and we'll just go to his ear here. I might have to come back and fix a couple spots. So there you get the shape of his head. Now you can split this up into layers as well. Um, and you can call it face layer, details layer eyes layer, whatever you want. I'm just going to stay in one layer for now. I'll let you guys figure that one out. Okay. All right. So now to get the color of that layer, because our, all our details are in black, but now we can start actually adding colors from the original. I can actually go to the, let's make sure I have my whole shape selected. I can go to the eyedropper with that selected and just click a color. That didn't work. Oh, that worked. Okay. So that actually picks a tone. If I move that to the back, that's what I get. Okay, but right now it just kind of looks like a funny, weird cartoon. So I'll show you how to add some shape to that. So I'll actually take or add some contour or definition. I'm going to take the color of the, out of that for now and just define the stroke. Again, it's just easier to draw when we have no, no color in the shapes. And don't forget to lock your bottom layer so it doesn't move around on you. 
Okay, so let's go and maybe create a shape. Make sure I got the second layer selected. In here to define his his jaw chin area. So I'm kind of going over it again. And I'll just go up to there. And here when you get to this area where there's not you're not sure where it meets up, it's okay to make it up as you go. So if you think that the definition of that shape is there, then go with that. Or just take a look and see what it looks like, colorize it, go back, try it again. So I'm just going to zoom out and sample from that area. And again, let's just do that again. Okay. We're going to flip those colors around and get something like that. So you can see how it's starting to come along. Probably have to draw that shape under his lip there just to get so he doesn't look like. An old dude there. And I can also create another layer. Okay, or I can, yeah, maybe putting that into a layer uh, is easier, right? Because then we can turn it on and off. So I'll just create a skin layer, put that in between, move that down, and then we're going to hide that layer. Okay, I go back to the detail layer. Almost done here, guys. Go to the pen tool. And I'm just going to define that shape. And we'll colorize that black. And that might help just to, looks a little bit more realistic. But again, the more detail you add, the better it's going to look. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's do a little bit of hair. Now this it depends on the hairstyle or stubble or whatever, whiskers. But what we can do, and if you're working with brushes, I would say experiment with brushes. You could even use a scatter brush or, you know, whatever. There's really no right or wrong to this. You can open up your brush library and go into different artistic brushes that you think might have more let's just try this see what comes up you can create a new layer for that if you'd like call it hair and go to your brush tool oh and that's too big right obviously that's not going to work so you just make a smaller brush or pick a different brush set to make your brush smaller. Okay, so that's no good. Or you can make your own brush. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and create a shape. It's so maybe a little triangle like this. And I know you can't see that because you got a really large stroke. So you can make a really quick brush. And sometimes that's a better way to do things maybe a little bit thinner. All you do is drag that brush into your brush palette and turn it into an art brush or a pattern brush, but let's see what that does. So now when I have that selected, I can actually go in create. Now unfortunately for Stephen Kerr, he's got a lot of this stubble. Now this is probably not a great brush but it's a good way to start you probably want to fix that a bit but you can really just paint this stuff in and then turn your layers on or off see if it works if it doesn't you could create a shape for that but I think that will get us going on this and then we'll do part three tomorrow okay Okay guys, so have fun with this and I'm gonna